I used to be Oro Bunch, but now I'm a Phylon. But I'm still in the Oro Bunchaceae family, the broom rape family. This is a Phylon californicum, the California broom rape. California broom rape is a parasitic plant which tends to parasitize things in the Asteraceae family. In this case, it's parasitizing this Artemisia tridentata, the California sagebrush. What a wonderful uh, relationship. Here we are in a wash in Holcomb Valley in uh, San Gabriel Mountains full of the Artemisia tridentata and quite a few specimens of the Orobanch or uh, um, Orobanch ACA family member Aphylon californicum. What's interesting to me as a practitioner of Chinese medicine is that this Orobanchaceae family is now the home of Raymania glutinosa, the Chinese medicinal known as Di Huang. And uh, interestingly, Raymania is one of, I think, two genus in the Orobanchaceae family that is not parasitic. I just think it's super interesting when you know that that little golden thing there is a parasitic plant and it's parasitizing the green leaf thing next to it, the Artemisia tridentata. Which is in its own right is a wonderful plant, but it's even more wonderful that it just gives up a bit of its resources to uh, the California broom rape. Which is just so strange. Like the uh, mycoheterotrophic members of their Acacia family like snow plant and Terraspora, the wooden pine drops, it too just shoves its way up out of the soil. We can see this, this dirt clod, it just, just push it out of the way and emerge, emerge. Anyway, my initial interest in this plant was that the flower looked a lot like Ramania's flower. After harvesting the root, one of the interesting things about the root is that the root is white, but when you dry it, it turns black. What does that sound like? Well, that's what the root of Ramania glutinosa does. Or at least that's what the root of Ramania glutinosa should do. From the other side, it looks maybe a little bit more interesting. You know, as, it, as the aerial parts, the sexy parts turn to stem, it starts turning white and projects pretty far down there under the ground to find the juicy roots of its host, the Artemisia tridentata. We also seem to have a little bit of Gariogenum here, Polygonaceae family member. But this baby is certainly more interested in the in the California sagebrush. Is that right? Artemisia tridentata. And all the common names and the Latin names. You know. It's hard to keep them all straight. Look at this one over here. Growing under a willow tree. But not surprisingly, there's the there's the Artemisia growing next to it, Asteraceae family member, the one of the I guess I think the primary genus that the Orobanchaceae parasitize, the ones that are parasitic. 
They're both hiding out here underneath the willow tree. What a nice spot. It's a little shadier over here. This one's still got some color to it. That's that maroonish color of the flower that I mentioned before. Inside a couple other specimens, a couple other family members. Again. Just living in a sea of sagebrush. Maybe it's just me, but when I look at that flower, I see Raymania glutinosa. Ooh. Look at those trichomes. Oh. That's a weird plant. I'm like, yeah, it's a weird plant. It, it's a parasite. Of course it looks odd. It needs other things for a living. But then you'd have to ask yourself, I mean like, what's not eating other things for a living? Hmm. I'm going to eat some Artemisia that's about to go to flower. One of the upsides of trolling around this plant is that it smells great. It smells great right next to the Artemisia. Uh, so the sexy parts. at the anther. Try to tell me that that doesn't look like like look at the banation. Get up close and personal with the California broom rape, A Phylon Californicum. This is a tiny specimen. You may have guessed that. I'm using a macro lens with 10x magnification. These features are about a centimeter in length. The light is flickering because it's being filtered through the Artemisia tridentata. Get ready for the... Well, that's what we're looking at. Here's its other buddy. Here's its host. I really want to see the root of the California broom rape where it makes its connection with the root of the Artemisia tridentata. I'm digging this hole. There's a particular structure involved in this parasitic relationship. I think it's called Haustrum, possibly. 
but we're we're getting down there pretty far, about eight inches deep. Uh, the root seems to be heading northward towards this bunch of Artemisia, and uh, we're getting a bit of a late summer thunderstorm, a little bit of rain. It's pretty darn amazing. Before I started digging this hole, there was about two inches of this plant visible to the naked eye. The root is descending down about a foot at least. On the right we see the root coming from the Artemisia and then we can start seeing the oral bunch intermingling with it. And then down here we get to some of these interesting structures which are where the magic happens. Well, alright, and hopefully just in the nick of time before the thunderstorms really erupt, I got to the bottom of the little mystery. Here we have the California broom rape. I've dug about an 18 inch deep hole to get to the interesting portion of the root where it actually connects with the Artemisia californica, I'm sorry, the Artemisia tridentata, which is coming from the left. The root on the right is the um, Aphylon californicum, and this little bundle down here is where the root of the Artemisia californica. Uh, the Artemisia tridentata, which I'm holding, has intermingled inseparably with the root of the A. phylon californicum. What a wonderful little item. So again, in a form that's a little easier to see, here we have the California broom rape. Stem extending down in the soil about 15 inches, and in my hand is the root of, or a root, from the Artemisia tridentata. And as they get down to the domain of the root hairs, we meet this bundle where the stem from the California broom rape meets the root from the Artemisia tridentata and and then technical terms which elude me are applicable here. I'm gonna go home and wash this off and see what it looks like without all the dirt. You could just imagine that the root on the top would be attached to Artemisia tridentata. The, the, on the bottom we have the aerial part of the Aphylon californicum, the California broom rape, the parasitic plant which uses the Asteraceae family member, the Artemisia, as its host. The orobanch seeds are stimulated by strigalactones from the Artemisia uh, and then they create little haustoria that attach to the root of the Artemisia as the seeds mature they turn into parasitic tubercles which then at some point send up a shoot where we can see some coming around the back side of this specimen, this year's specimen, or this year's 
growth was this one. This plant is collected September 2nd, so it's already decaying and uh, preparing to send up uh, new shoots next year. The interesting thing is this integrated matter of aster root parasitic tubercle and the various roots historia and tubercles all intermingled here together in this mass of life